as we uh, continue through this week leading up to Easter, this week we call Holy Week, I can't help but to think about the last week of Jesus's life. And as we continue to pour through this journey of his last week on earth, I, I, I love to think about those things that he was going through. As mentioned yesterday, this triumphal entry and this, uh, this whole reason that he was celebrated as this Passover lamb. And there were all kinds of people who were reaching out and trying to connect with Jesus in some way. And it wasn't just the Jewish people who were coming into the city to worship. There were other people. The Bible mentioned that there were Greeks, even these these philosophers, these intellectuals that as we would know them, uh, they were they were looking for Jesus and, and they wanted to ask him questions. And the disciples went and found Jesus and said, these guys want to talk to you. And you know, it's my understanding that Jesus actually answered some of their questions. And I'm sure there were some philosophical questions. But in John chapter 12, we see his answer to one of their questions. I don't know exactly what the question was, but in verse 23, it says that Jesus answered them. It said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. And I love how Jesus answers this question with a purpose of life statement. And he says, really, the whole reason that we are here is to bring life. He said, I have come and lived so that I can die so that you can live. Uh, Jesus is doing a great job also of, kind of predicting his death and he knows what is coming and, and is showing and telling everybody around him, this is what's going to happen. But Jesus does a great job of describing this with a, a grain of wheat. The imagery is beautiful and he says that if it dies into the earth, it will spring up and bear much fruit. And really what he's saying in this is about himself. He says, I need to die, go into the earth, and there will be life. Imagine that if, if Jesus didn't go to the cross and die for us, we wouldn't have life. We wouldn't have salvation. We wouldn't have eternal life for sure. And it doesn't just stop with him. He's probably challenging his disciples along the way as well. How do you live this life in Christ? Well, you die to self so that you can raise up more, more and more fruit. I mean, that's, that's what this life is all about, it, is that we can die to these selfish desires that we have so that we can live an abundant life for Christ. So the challenge, I think, for you and for me is, what is it that I need to die to? What are, what are some things that I need to stuff down, put into death so that Christ can live inside of me? That's what I believe we're called to do. Not just this week, but every week moving forward. But as we continue to approach Easter, I would challenge you to go to him, to confess what's on your heart, and to bury that stuff so that you can live. Let's pray together. Father God, I, I thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to walk in this life with you and your son Jesus, to see what it truly means to have life, that we, we do die to self and we do take those selfish desires and we, and we bury them. God, that way you can live through us. Thank you so much for approaching us and allowing us to come to you in humility as well. God, I just pray this prayer of confession uh, that the things that are holding me back help me to bury, help me to put away so that I can live in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for him and that wonderful name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.